and I am I'm so thankful brother Austin New did a phenomenal job last night can we give him a hand there is a mantle there is a purpose and uh, we were talking this morning in the prayer and worship service and I, I was telling him the one thing and, and he, the one point he brought out that I think is the biggest thing for this generation is not only did Elisha take up the mantle, but he used it. And he, he operated in it. And I, I just a phenomenal job last night. Uh, the exhortation and worship and prayer was awesome this morning. Thank you, uh, home folk, for coming and being a part of last night, this morning, and for being here tonight. We're so thankful for your faithfulness to this ministry, and we're so thankful to have all the visitors tonight. And please, please remember and note that we are having food after service, and then young people will be playing some more games um, here this evening, hopefully um, it won't be as uh, physically involved as it was <laughs> last night. Uh, some of these young people uh, were holy rollers and uh, rolling all over the floor last night with some of our games. But we appreciate uh, if you would stop by and fellowship with us after service tonight. But I am honored to have a dear friend, uh, Brother Robbie Grubbs, with us tonight. And I'm just so amazed at what God is doing in his ministry and where God is taking him. And I thank God for what he's done in Robbie's life. What he's doing right now. And for what he's going to do. And the nations he's preached Jesus in. Is just amazing. The opportunities that God has given him. And I'm so excited. And our young people in our church are so excited to have you here tonight. Brother Robbie if you would come. And would you give him a hand as he comes up here tonight. I love this brother and I appreciate it. Come on, somebody give it up for Jesus. Come on, you can do better for that. Give it up for Jesus. You know, it matters how we approach God. It matters how we respond to God. The Bible says that the Spirit of God is subject to the prophet. Does that mean that we control God? Does that mean that we're greater than God? No, but it does mean this, that God will not usurp your will and make you let him move on you. You have to allow God. You have to respond to the presence of God when he shows up in a manifest way. So I want us all to stand up, and I want you just to lift up your hands, and I want you to say, God, I respond to you tonight. And however you got to respond to him, you can wave your hands, you can start walking around, but, but I'm just going to give you one more opportunity before we go into the word of God. Can you just give him a response to what he's doing in the room? He's here, but can you respond to him? Say, God, you can have my will. God, I'll obey you. God, I'll open up my mouth. God, I'll open up my voice. God, I'll open up my heart. God, I'll open up my mind. Come on, somebody, some, some young person, just, just, just obey him. Lift up your voice. Say, man. Lift up your worship tonight. Tell Jesus how much you love. If you got to get on your knees for a second, I think I'm going to do that tonight. If you got to get on your knees and respond that way, just respond to his love that he saved you, that he called you. If you just got to pace back and forth for a second can you just do that come on I'm gonna put this mic down and you and you just let God have it tonight you respond in any way that you feel led to tonight Come on, for just another 60 seconds, just respond to the Lord. If you need to respond to the Spirit of God by going to pray for somebody, can you just do that right now? Come on, be led of the Holy Ghost. If you feel led just to, just to go lay hands on somebody, do it. Amen. If you feel led just to stand up or whatever you got to do, just obey God. Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, thank you that you are in this room. Oh, thank you that it's all about you, Jesus. Holy Spirit. 
it. You don't come to speak of yourself. You come to speak of the person of Jesus. Talk to us today. Let us pray for people in the name of Jesus. Let us worship in the name of Jesus. Bring forth healings in the name of Jesus. Let deliverance take place in the name of Jesus. Let salvations take place in the name of Jesus. We respond, God. We refuse, Lord. God, to quench the spirit on the inside of us, Lord. We know that we are subject unto you. Your spirit is subject unto our response. And we say, yes, Lord. We say, yes, Lord. We say yes, Lord. Come on, one more time. Lift up those hands and just say yes, Lord, tonight. Yes, Lord, to what you have for me. Yes, Lord, to what you have for our youth group. Yes, Lord, to what you have for my life. Yes, Lord, to what you have for our church. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. To your will, to your way, we give you all glory. We give you all praise tonight in Jesus name somebody shout hallelujah come on somebody shout hallelujah somebody shout praise the Lord somebody give your neighbor a high five say come on Jesus come on with your best southern twain say come on G come on give them a give them a high five say come on Jesus well okay I got 30 percent participation somebody give your neighbor a high five and say come on Jesus that was better. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Man, I'm excited today. This, this week, I believe it was Wednesday, July 14th, um, man, I, I got into my feels. I was a little bit emotional, Brother Jade, because, because 12 years ago last Wednesday, God saved me. God baptized me in the Holy Ghost, and he called me to preach on the first night of Barberville Pentecostal Youth Camp, July 14, 2009. Can somebody help me give God glory for that? I praise God for that. I was preaching last Wednesday, and man, what an honor it was uh, just to celebrate 12 years. You know, I was thinking uh, uh, just listening to you all worship and just testify and listening to Pastor Jay talk about what God is doing in chosen youth group and, and just the young people here. Um, um, it makes me think, uh, because this is maybe the second or third year that I've been here, maybe during the summertime, and, and, and you can feel the growth. You can feel the hunger amongst you young people. So, so adults, can we give these young people a great hand clap of appreciation for, for, for hungering after the Lord to see the growth? And I guess that means I'm getting old, amen, because I was here at the beginning, and now I'm here in the middle, too. But I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to see what God is doing in you and through you. We're so thankful for Austin and Kyla being able to come yesterday. Can we give them another great hand clap of appreciation? We honor them. We come on, does anybody love Austin? Come on. I know he preached a word last night. We're so thankful for Pastor Russell. Does anybody love Pastor Russell? Amen. We love them so much, and we just love this church and this youth group, and we're so thankful to be here. I have a few friends with me. Uh, uh, we actually were in Mississippi last week. We got up at 5 a.m. this morning to drive all the way up to Connersville, Indiana, amen, uh, but we made it just in time. I think I was five minutes late, so I apologize. I hate being late, but uh, man, there is no place I'd rather be tonight, amen. There is no place I'd rather be than, than, than in the midst of people that are hungry for God, people that want a mantle, people that aren't satisfied with just a status quo, people who want a genuine move of God. Do I have anybody that's ready for revival tonight? I don't know about you, but I came looking for Azusa Street 2.0 tonight, amen. I came looking for a Holy Ghost outpouring, and I know that's what God's going to do in our midst, amen. Let's go to the Word of God. We're going to go to Numbers chapter 16. Numbers chapter 16. I've been kind of sick in my voice the last couple days, so if you could give me as much volume as possible. I may not be screaming as much tonight, but, but I know the Lord's got something to speak to us, amen. Numbers chapter 16. We're going to start with verse Verse 41, let me flip there in the Word of God. Numbers chapter 16. Oh, wow, whatever you did there, that sounds good, brother. Numbers 16, let's all stand for the reading of the Word of God. Numbers 16, and if I could get a, a bottle of water, maybe that would be great. Thank you, Pastor. Brother Pastor, amen. Numbers 16. 
verses 41 through 50. Numbers 16, verses 41 through 50. The Bible says this, But on the morrow all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. Someone say Moses. Someone say Aaron. Saying, You have killed the people of the Lord. And it came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation. And behold, the cloud covered it and the glory of the Lord appeared. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, I want the glory tonight. And Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, get you up from among this congregation that I may consume them as in a moment, and they fell upon their faces. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer, somebody say censer, and put fire from the altar, somebody say fire from the altar, and put on incense, say incense as well, and go quickly unto the congregation and make an atonement for them, for there is wrath gone out from the Lord, the plague is begun. And Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put on incense and made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living. And the plague went away. Now they that died in the plague were 14,700 beside them that died about the matter of Korah. And Aaron returned unto Moses unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the plague was stopped. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, God's calling you to be a plague stopper tonight. Come on, somebody give your neighbor a fist bump and say, God's calling you to be a plague stopper tonight. And that's what we're going to preach on, amen, to us in this congregation. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence. God, thank you for this amazing worship team. God, thank you for this amazing camp. Thank you for all the things that you are doing in this house. God, <clears throat> Lord, our, our voice may be weak tonight. God, we know that as we preach on, on being a generation of plague stoppers, God, the enemy will try to come against us with those same plagues. But right now we rise above the enemy. Right now we take authority against the enemy. God, right now as Brother Austin preached last night, we will raise the dead. We will cleanse the leper. We will, we will lay our hands on the sick and they be healed. We will cast out demons. We will take up serpents and not be harmed. And right now we take up the serpent of Satan. We rip his head off in the name of Jesus. And we cast him down right now under the authority of the Holy Ghost. Death will not reign in this room. Discouragement will not reign in this room. Principalities and powers have to fall. God, you've not just given pastor the authority. You've not just given me the authority. But God, you're giving these young people authority again tonight to go forth and stop the plagues in their world. Jesus, we say we're hungry for it. We're hungry for the genuine. We're hungry for a move. And we ask that you would have your way in this room in Jesus' name. Amen. As you're seated, give him a great, great hand clap of praise. Amen. <laughs> plague stoppers. Plague stoppers. You know, plague is defined as a disastrous evil or affliction or an epidemic disease causing a high rate of mortality or even a sudden unwelcome outbreak. Now let me give you some numbers here tonight. 186 million, 4 million 29,152 and 76. You may say, what in the world is he talking about up there? I'm glad you asked me what those numbers mean. Let me go back and tell you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. 186 million is the total coronavirus cases in our world today. 4,029,152 are the total coronavirus deaths in the entire world today. 76 was the total number of days globally the entire world had to shut down because of COVID-19. Now, words like pandemic, social distancing, 
quarantine, essential, the new normal, lockdown, mask up are all words that no one used in their vocabulary until 2020, right? But the plague shifted the way we walked. The plague shifted the way that we talked. The plague literally shifted the way that we even thought in our mind. But maybe the most frightening thing about COVID-19 was how it attacked our Christian culture. Churches were forced to shut down. People could not gather together. Fellowship was broken amongst the body of Christ. In many ways, we as a church, but even us as a generation, were unprepared at what the enemy was trying to do in the world. In many ways, we didn't know how to respond. In many ways, God presented us an opportunity that we failed to capitalize on. Where was our faith? Where was our push for revival? Where was our belief that God could do what he's always done? Is anybody in the house here tonight? But what if, what if tonight God is giving a generation a second chance? What if God is calling a generation, this chosen youth group, this chosen movement right here in Connersville, what if God is calling you and I to stop the plague that is still raging in this world today? I'm not just talking about the plague of COVID-19. I'm not just talking about the plague that, 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 uh, that has ravaged our world, but I'm talking about every plague of disease I'm talking about the plagues of sin and I'm even talking about the plagues of perversion I don't care what the plague is I believe the mandate of the Holy Ghost listen I know Austin's already preached about it last night but I've come just to reaffirm what the Holy Ghost was saying God has brought a mantle into this room for a young person to stand up in the supernatural power of God and say I refuse to be dry I refuse not to believe God but if God said we can heal the sick we will heal the sick if God said blinded eyes can be open we will open blind I wonder if there's a young person tonight that would stand to their feet and say God let me be a plague stopper in this day and hour I believe with all my heart that God is calling a generation of plague stoppers to stand between the living and the dead and to show the healing power of Jesus Christ. Pastor Russell, I can't help but to think about the 1950s, about the 1960s, and maybe there's some young people that have never heard this before, but there was literally a wave, a movement of healing evangelism that took place in the 1900s. Did you know in our country, our country hasn't always been like this young people our country used to believe by faith that God was who he said he was amen and you had these great men of God like A.A. A. Allen R.W. Shambach Oral Roberts I feel that in my spirit some of y'all need to go back and study those old men of God because you'll learn a lot from them amen but what would they do they would go to, to great fields in Indiana amen they would go to great open places and they would begin to set up big tents amen and, and thousands of people would would come to feel to would come and fill these tents. Now, now think about this: wars were going on. There were world wars going on. Amen. Uh, uh, medicine was not as advanced as it is uh, in our world right now. Amen. So all these different things force people to believe God, force people to to uh, to go to the Word of God because they could not turn anywhere else. I feel like there's somebody in this room. You've turned to everything else. I don't know what you're going through I don't know what's going on in your mind what's going on in your church what's going on in your family but can I tell you how about you give God a chance tonight how about you give the healing power of Jesus how, how come we try everything else but when it comes to the church when it comes to the altar when it comes to the blood of Jesus we say well we'll save that for last what if a young person says I'm gonna believe God first I'm gonna believe God for healing first I'm not gonna run to anybody else I'm not gonna run to a professor I'm not going to run to a doctor, but Jesus, show me your glory. So here you had people that literally would set up tents and thousands of people would come under these tents. And they weren't telling people to not come, but they were saying, if you're sick, the sick of the sick, 
the broken of the broken, some of them were contagious. Some of them had diseases, amen. But they didn't shut their doors and lock the doors. And I'm not saying, listen, I'm not saying any church that locked their doors for, 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 for 76 days is, is out of the will of God. But it does make me think about where was our faith. If we really believe that by his stripes we are healed, why didn't we open up our doors and say we want every COVID patient in this room? Because we believe that there is a God that can heal, that can show his glory, that can manifest his power i'm all for wisdom i'm all listen i'm all for 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 taking precautions but there's so many people in this world today that are taking so many precautions that they don't even believe this bible anymore but i'm here to challenge a generation believe this word believe what it says and walk in the faith and the healing of god that he has called you to tonight come on somebody give him glory Matthew 10, verses 7 and 8, the Bible says, Jesus said, go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. If you know anything about me, one of, one of the highlights of my life so, for, uh, so far was moving to Tulsa and attending Oral Roberts. And, and, and there, just, just to see the vision of a man of God that literally wanted to take the healing power of God across the world. And Oral Roberts in prayer one day before he started the college, the Lord gave him this commission for, for, for our generation, for, for our young people. The Lord spoke this to him. Raise up your students to hear my voice. To go where my light is dim. Where my voice is heard small. Where my healing power is not known. Even to the uttermost bounds of the earth, their work will exceed yours. And in this, I am well pleased. Oral's testimony was amazing. And I want to just tell you a couple parts uh, about it tonight. Oral Roberts was attending a university when he was struck down with tuberculosis during his teenage years. He had been an athlete on the basketball team, but all that was gone on after he had spent 160 plus days on his back in his sick, in, in, in bed sick. The time was quickly approaching when his life would be over. Oral's older brother, Elmer, had been attending the revival and seen people receiving from God on a supernatural level. Elmer drove to his father's house and picked up Oral and his mom and his dad and took them all to the tent revival to attend an evening service. It was a long service, lasting until 11 p.m., and he was the last one prayed for. But the evangelist's wife touched his head with olive oil on her finger to anoint him for her husband's prayer. When he finally came over to pray for him, his parents stood up, one on either side holding him. The evangelist power had no opening. He didn't begin with the idea of getting himself worked up, but with boldness he laid his hands on Oral's head and literally spoke to the disease binding him. He said, you foul, tormenting disease, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, come out of this boy, loose him him and let him go as he stepped back listen to this Oral felt something like an electrical shock go through his entire being. Then a strong warming sensation flowed into him. His lungs opened like a flower. And the most exhilarating energy swept over him. And the next thing Oral remembered was breathing from his lungs all the way down with no coughing, with no sharp shooting pains, and no weakness. Listen, Oral actually yelled out in this service. I'm healed I'm healed then he cried and he laughed and he praised God and the entire audience leaped to their feet to praise the Lord and together they gave God the glory somebody give him glory for that testimony before oral listen to me young people before oral could take healing to the world God had to heal him first you hear me if Oral never would have gotten healed himself, he could not have healed his generation. He could have not never seen signs. But there, but there was something that had to start on the inside of him.
There was something that God had to let do on the inside of his own life. Amen. Oral, there is a mantle of healing in this room. God is going to heal you so you can heal your generation. Did you know we just read about Moses and Aaron stopping a plague? But did you know before Moses could deliver Egypt, God had to deliver Moses from himself? Oh, I'm preaching better than you're, than, you're, the, uh, than you're helping me tonight. Amen. I said before Moses could go and deliver a generation, he had to let God deliver himself. It was the same thing with Aaron. Moses and Aaron had to have an encounter with God. If you never have an encounter with God, if you never let him touch your life, your mind, your heart, then you will never be able to give what God has done in you. But if there will be a young person that says, mark me with your glory, mark Mark me with your presence. Mark me with your power. And if God does it in you, then the power of God can be made manifest out of your life. Somebody give him glory in this house. (laughs) Moses was on the backside of a desert for 40 years. He was a murderer. He was a backslider. He needed deliverance himself. If he had never found deliverance from the burning bush, he never could have walked into Pharaoh and said, let my people go. If he had never had let God touch his voice and his weakness, he never would have been able to speak to Pharaoh. Amen. But because Moses said, my heart is open. My mind is open. My hands. God, before you deliver Egypt, deliver for me God before you deliver your people let me have an encounter with you oh God I wonder if there's anybody in this room it's easy to point the people your finger at other people Jake and say God's gonna do this for you and I see this in you that you need free from but it's a lot harder to point your finger at yourself and say God this is where I'm hurting This is where I need deliverance from. Amen. You know, the Bible says that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. If you don't have a testimony of Jesus operating in your own life, you don't have a prophetic word to give anybody. Amen. Because if God hasn't done it for you, how do you know God's going to do it for somebody else? But maybe what you're going through is going to be a sign and a miracle and a wonder for somebody else that's going through the same thing. That's why I love to give my testimony from 4 to uh, 16 years old. You want to know why I'm so passionate about being a plague stopper? You want to know why I'm so passionate about healing? Because 12 years, amen, and Brother Robbie Grubbs, I could not speak. I would stutter. I would stammer. I could not speak eloquently at all. For 12 years, I was in speech therapy. I had to go to speech classes day in, day out. I can remember people laughing at me. I was shy. I was insecure for many, many years but when I encountered Jesus at 16 years old at a youth camp just like this amen God called me he saved me he baptized me in the Holy Ghost but he healed my speech as well gave me the ability don't you tell me that God can't use you to be a plague stopper if he can do it in me he can do it in you Our sister has already stood up and showed you the scars on her wrist. That's not who she is, but she can stand to a generation and say, the plague of self-harm has to stop now in the name of Jesus. It is a sin. It is a sin if God has touched you and you refuse to testify about it to another person, Kobe. It is a sin if God has performed a miracle and a healing in your life and you sit on your backside your entire life and never tell anybody about what God has done in your life. Your testimony is what can overcome the enemy, not just in your life, but in another person's life. And there's some young people, and Jade was telling me about this, that have got some boldness the last year, amen, has got some authority in the Holy Ghost. And I believe there's somebody that's going to walk out of this house here tonight and say, let me find somebody that used to be the same person that I used to be. Used to be bound by lust. Used to be bound by fear. Used to be bound by, let me get a hold of them. Let me call my friends up, amen, and tell them that if God did it for me, he can do it for them. Somebody give him glory. 
The Bible says this in Malachi 4, 2, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Do I have anybody that says, God, even if nobody else wants to know the son of righteousness, with God, let it be me. Use my hands as the healing wings of Jesus to a generation. Look at how God instructs Moses and Aaron to stop the plague. To go back to our verses, the Bible says this in verse 46. It says, Moses said to Aaron, take a censer and put fire in it from the altar and lay incense on it. Then bring it quickly to the congregation and make atonement for them. For wrath has gone forth from the Lord. The plague has begun. So Aaron took the burning censer as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the assembly. And behold, the plague had already begun among the people. And he put on the incense and made atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living so that the plague was brought to an end. There was a plague. That wasn't just affecting the world. It was affecting the church. You hear me? Plagues, plagues don't just come after the world. COVID just didn't come after the world. It came after the church. Come on, somebody. You can say, I'm washed in the blood. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I know many people that said that that still got COVID-19. Come on, I don't mean to be, 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 be bold, but, but it happened, right? So what do you do? How do you become a plague stopper? What did Moses and Aaron, what did Aaron have to do to, to, to stand between the living and the dead and cause the plague to go away? There were three things that Aaron needed, and the first was a censor. Somebody say a censor. Somebody look, look, uh, look at your neighbor and say a censor. A censer, what's a censer? Basically, it's just a container. It was a golden container that was used in the church, that was used in the tabernacle. And this censer was a vessel, somebody say a vessel, a vessel that needed to be full of fire. So, so what would happen, and this is what Aaron did. Aaron took this censer, which was like a container, which was like a bowl, and he walked over to the sacrifice and the fire that was burning on the altar with the coals, with the sacrifice. And he took that coal and he took that flame and he put it in the vessel. And he would close it with just a little space left. And when he closed the container with the fire on the inside of the container, the incense would go up to God, the Bible says. And, and God would smell it. And he would remember that he loved the people. And he would stop the plague. And he would forgive them of what they had did. The censer is the carrier for the fire. Aaron needed, number one, the censer. Aaron ne needed, number two, the fire from off the altar. And Aaron needed number three, the incense from the fire that was on the inside of the censer. The censer was the carrier. The fire is a representation of the Spirit of God. And the incense was the worship of praise and repentance on behalf of the people. You may say, Robbie, I don't understand right now. You're talking about Aaron and Moses. You're talking about this vessel, this container that they put fire in. How does it apply to us? Let me tell you, you you are the censor. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, you are the censor. Pastor Jade, you are the censor. Austin, you are the censor. Pastor Russell, you are the censor. You are the container. You are what God wants to fill. But an empty container does not do anything. Hallelujah. An empty container does not do anything. If Aaron would have just had a container and walked and walked in, but in the middle of the living and the dead with an empty container, the plague still would have went throughout the camp and thousands of more people would have died. But Aaron did not just stop with the sin. I thank God. You, you want to know what the Holy Ghost just spoke to me? The censor is you getting saved. Come on, somebody. I'm so glad you got saved. I'm so glad you're on your way to heaven, washed in the blood. Amen. Saved, sanctified. Amen. Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. But we got to get to the Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized part. Come on, somebody in the house. 
It's easy to be saved, but can I tell you there is more of the fire and the power of God in this room. Aaron, I'm glad that you're a priest. Aaron, I'm glad that you're ministering to the Lord. But Aaron, you got a censer and you need to put fire in the censer to burn for the glory of God. Young people, there is a Holy Ghost outpouring in this room. There is fire in this altar. You are the censer. Your heart is the vessel. Your mind is the vessel. And did you know you can come up to an altar tonight? You can lift up your hands. You can cry out for more of God. And the fire of God will fill your body up. You are the temple. From the very beginning, Genesis, where did the, the presence of God was supposed to be in you? Was supposed to dwell with you? And sin came in and what happened? The presence of God was evicted. But then came the tabernacle, what we're reading right here. The presence of God was limited to a house. Amen. But guess what? They, they, they did that way for a while. And then they built a big temple. And the presence of God came into that temple. And the fire fell. But then came Jesus. And Jesus came. And he died on a cross. And he bled for you and I. And what happened when Jesus got up on the third day? Amen. He rose with the keys of death, hell, and the grave. That is the gospel. Amen? Because Jesus, God, did not want his presence just to be in a walled house. He did not just want his presence to be in a tabernacle. He just doesn't want us to build a building and make it all fancy. But he wanted what was in Acts chapter 2. And what happened in Acts chapter 2? They were in an upper room. It smelled bad. It looked bad. They probably didn't have deodorant on. Kind of stunk a little bit, amen. Probably, probably didn't look the best. They'd been in there for 10 days, but guess what? There were 120 people that said, we know the fire of God is not just meant for four walls, but we want the glory of God in our own life. And there was a group of 120 that said, God, if your presence can fill anybody, let it fill us. I wonder if there's a young person in the house that says, God, it should be impossible for your glory to fill me, but if you can fill anybody, tonight oh fill me up with the fire of God hallelujah you may say well how does that happen God is a spirit God is omnipresent he is everywhere he is he is with you when you're taking a shower he is with you at the job I've had a revival in my shower before hallelujah he's with me when I go to China He's with you when you're at a graveyard. He's with you in Walmart, wherever you want to go. He's with, he is everywhere. You can go to Mars. You can't out, you can't outrun the spirit and the power of God. He fills the universe. That's how great your God is. Is anybody understanding me tonight? You don't serve a God that is limited. No, what you think of God, multiply it by a million. And that's who your God, and that still pales in comparison to your Jesus. Hallelujah. How do, there's this thing called the manifest presence of God. And when you read about revival, and when you read about a great move of God, Austin, it's not that, it's not that we can contain all of God in one thing, but the manifest presence of God is a concentrated. It's a, con, have you ever had like orange juice before? Orange juice from like con uh, uh, concentrate, I think that's a thing, right? And it's like a high dose of it, and you really get that orangey flavor. Like, like if it's concentrated, if it's a high dose of something, that means that they put a lot in a little bit. Amen. You want to know what happens when fire begins to fill you? The God of all the universe says, I'm going to manifest myself on the inside of it. I know you shouldn't be able to contain it, but God says, your vessel, your body can house the manifest presence presence of God and just maybe when you get to a place like Azusa Street when you get to uh, uh, the 1950s and 60s where they're under tents amen that 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 great God that fills the universe he begins to move in a room why do we gather because the manifest presence of God comes into the room and begins to do signs miracles and wonders amen 
Is that a, a generation of plague stoppers? And the Bible says that the censer is you and I. It's the vessel. The fire is the Holy Spirit that fills the vessel. But the fire just doesn't fill the vessel. Because when you get full of the Holy Ghost and the fire of God, an aroma begins to come out of your life. You don't talk the same way. You don't walk the same way. You don't live the same way. You don't, you don't have the same perspective in life. You don't live for the same things. Hey man, game five of the finals is probably going on right now. I love basketball, but there is nothing greater than when I think about the presence of the Lord. Hey man, praise God. Oh, I wish a young person would get so hungry for the presence of the Lord that they say, I don't care if I miss softball practice. I don't care if I miss basketball practice. I don't care if I got to give up. But God, just show me your glory in this day and hour. Hallelujah. You can play Fortnite for nine hours. You can see God for three. Oh, hallelujah. I mean, if you can scroll on TikTok for an hour and a half before you can go to bed, you can get down on your knees and say, God, you're living God. I want your, God, we need revival as a youth group. Amen. If you can. Yeah, listen, it's crazy. I walk through airports. I walk on the mission field. I'm in a lot of big places sometimes, and it's crazy. Young people, listen, I have TikTok, but I never use it because I'm not this bold, but they will literally set their phones up, and in the middle of like 100 people do some crazy dance. I'm like, do they not know how like stupid they look right now in the middle of all these people doing this crazy dance? If we can, if we can have enough boldness to look like an idiot doing a dance, how much more can we come into the house of the Lord as young people and dance until the glory comes and shout a shout of victory and say God I will stand between the living and the dead until your glory comes to a generation oh I'm getting bold hallelujah you may as well just buckle up right here hallelujah praise the Lord I'm going to put my foot up right here amen Aaron was a priest why was Aaron the one that could be a plague stopper? Because he had the censer, because he had the fire, and because he had the incense. His worship. What is incense? It's your worship. It's your repentance. Saying, God, God, let my life be pleased. Let me burn. Let, let, let whatever is in me come out and give you glory. Amen. Give me clean hands. Give me a pure heart. Let me worship you in holiness and truth. Amen. He had the censer. He had the fire. Amen. He had the incense. But why was it Aaron and not everybody else? There were thousands of people that knew God. But there was only one Aaron. And Aaron was the priest. Did you know that when young people listen to me, look at me right here. When you get saved, the Bible says we become kings and priests. That's not my words. That's the words of the Bible. If you know Jesus, if you're saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, I got Jesus for my mind, I'm running for my life. Anybody know that song? Okay, maybe not. When you get saved, when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, you step out of, you want to know what phrase I hate? I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Oh, I'm just... I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Listen, you're only a sinner saved by grace one time. But when you pray that prayer of salvation, you're no longer a sinner. You're a son and daughter. Amen. You've been adopted into a kingdom. Yes, you'll struggle. But you're not a sinner anymore, baby. You're a child of God. Oh, I feel the glory right there, amen. Quick, I wish a generation would quit calling themselves sin. I wish a generation would quit making excuses and say, God, whatever I got to do to be a plague stopper, whatever I got to do for your glory, let me do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't even know where I was going with that. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Aaron dared to stand in the gap. Why could he do it? Because he was a priest. You were called to be a king. That's where I was going. You were called to be a priest. A priest wasn't like everybody else. He was separated. What, what does it mean that your name as a youth group is chosen? 
it means you're not like everybody else. You know, people, people always ask me about alcohol, drinking, smoking, tattoos, piercings. Listen, you may be able to do stuff and squeeze your way into heaven, but that's not what I'm looking for. That's not what Jesus is looking for. He is not looking for somebody to walk the line and see how close they can get to the world. That's not what being a Christian is. No, being a Christian is being a priest. Aaron couldn't do normal things that the rest of God's people could do. But it was worth it to Aaron because he wanted the glory of God. Oh, listen, if you really want the glory, those tattoos start to lose their flavor. Amen. When you really want the glory, you start to not think about the piercings. You start thinking about the culture. You start thinking about, oh, you just say, God, however, I've got to separate myself. God, I don't care what i got to do. I don't want to. God, I don't care what i got to lay down. God, just let me be a person for your glory. I can't give you a list of things to do and to not. No, the Holy Ghost, if you get him on the inside of you, he will convict you of sin. He will show you what to do and what not to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, I feel, I feel a push in my spirit right there. But can I tell you that we still serve a holy God? We still serve a God. Amen. Our filthiness is as, our righteousness is as filthy rags. Amen. The only reason that we can go to hell, the only reason that we can stand here today is by the grace and by the love of God. But it's by that same grace that I can walk above sin. It is by that same grace I can lay my hands on the sick and they be healed. It is by that same love that I can stand up and shout to the world that Jesus is risen. Hallelujah. I'm talking about a generation of plague stoppers. You hold the power to stop the plagues in this world. Do I have any young person tonight that would stand between the living and the dead? That would cry out for revival for their friends and families? Imagine what would have happened if Aaron would have refused to be a plague stopper. Already, the Bible says, 14,700 people died because he didn't act sooner. You hear me? One life, you know, that's one thing that the media portrayed so much. One life is bad enough. If COVID takes one life, that's bad. Amen. Genuinely takes that life. It's a bad thing. That's a person. Imagine you losing the person that's closest to you. That's not a good thing. It's going to hurt your heart. It's going to break your heart. One part. But the Bible says 14,700 people, Kobe, lost their lives. What if Aaron would have acted faster? What if he would have ran and got the censer and became the vessel and got full of the fire and became sweet incense unto the Lord and stood between the living and the dead? Maybe those 14,000 people would have survived. How many more people will we let die and continue to be bound because we lack the faith to pray for healing over their lives? You hold the power. You mean to tell me four million people have died in this world today? You know what I don't see a lot? I don't see on my Facebook page a lot. A lot of people testifying about laying their hands on COVID patients and them getting killed. I don't know why. Because, because the media has portrayed you can't get around them. You got to socially distance. They won't let you in the house. I don't know what it is. Hey Amen. And this may sound radical today. I don't care if you throw a Bible at me. That's okay. Hallelujah. But I'm talking to a radical generation. Amen. That says whatever we got to do to become a plague stopper. Oh, listen, there is always going to be a risk. There is always going to be a danger. There is always going to be something you have to give up. There is always going to be the chance of failure. But in the face of failure, in the face of fear, I wonder if there's a young person that would believe for God to be a healer in these last days. You hold the power to stop the plagues in this world. I've already said it, but I said it again. I'll say it again. Aaron was a type of Jesus. What did Jesus do for you and I? 
Brother Ben, he went to the cross and laid his body between the living and the dead, literally, and stopped the plague of sin. That's what Jesus, Aaron is showing us what Jesus would eventually do. We're seeing it in hindsight, right? Like we read about, but Aaron didn't know that he was going to be like the Messiah when he did that, but he was. And maybe you didn't know that you could be like Jesus in this way. But you can be a plague stopper and be like Jesus and stand between the living and the dead. Stand between your friends that are struggling, Connorsville that is struggling, your family that is struggling, and them slipping away into an eternity without Christ. That's what Jesus did for us. And that's what he commissions us to do today. But here's the catch. He did it for you first. And if you don't know that he stood between the living and the dead for you, Chucky, then you will not stand between the living and the dead for somebody else. If you don't understand the love and the grace of God, that the God of all the universe would, would literally lay his body down, humble himself to, to, uh, to this earth, live 30, 33 years on this earth, and die a horrible death on that cross, be forsaken of God the Father, hung there and died, nails in his hands, nails. In, he took the sin of the world, past, present, and future on him, in that moment and he died he did that he was Aaron he was the plague stopper he was the one that says I don't care if I gotta lay my body down on the line this world will not go to hell on my watch disease will not run rampant on my watch God you're able I pray you do it in this generation tonight hallelujah somebody Look at your neighbor and say, God's calling you tonight to be a plague stopper. If they want to come back to the music quickly, hallelujah. To stand between the living and the dead. Before you come up here and say, God, use me to do that. You've got to let him do it in you. I can't, I can't imagine... I think, about, I think about that seven-year-old boy at the beginning of June. I was preaching a little kid's camp. He was seven years old. He got up on the last night of camp, seven years old, and testified that he had been struggling with suicidal thoughts. I didn't even know what suicidal thoughts were at seven. But with tears streaming down his eyes, he said, God delivered me this week. I think about Chucky and I and a, a, a friend of ours, we went to Nicaragua, Ecuador, and Costa Rica after that camp in June for 17 days. In the last five or six days, 80 people who had never been saved before gave their lights to Jesus. Hallelujah. I think back to those moments. I think back to the last 12 years. I think back to that vital junction of my life at youth camp in an altar where I was broken. Where I was still bitter to my family because my dad was an alcoholic growing drugs in my, in my backyard when I was little. My family was torn apart. Anger, bitterness was on the inside of me. Being addicted to pornography, that spirit of lust, having a hold of my mind at 15 years old. I can remember that, that vital junction at 16 years old. And I can't help but to think this week, what if I would not have stood that day and let God deliver me? I don't say this to boast in myself. But at 16 years old, God got a hold of my heart and set me free. So for the last 12 years, I could see the 29 nations and the hundreds of people come to the Lord. What if I would have never let God set me free? Those people, those last 12 years, they may still be bound. They may still be broken. You want to know why our schools are still bound? Because we got young people. 
that are still bound. But if somebody would find freedom in this house, there is such freedom that you can have that you can't hide it when he sets your mind free. Oh, hallelujah. Real freedom. It's freedom that stands up that same day and says, I may have been shy before. I may have been bound before. But look what the Lord has done in my heart. There, listen, this, this, this altar call is going to be different. Because the first altar call is going to be for your deliverance. And God's going to deliver you. And then the second altar call is for you to be the deliverer. Amen. So I need everybody in the room to stand up right now. Amen. And if there is anything on the inside of you, you could be young, you could be old. I don't know if you're like Moses, struggle with your voice. I don't know if you're bound by, cha- I don't know what chains, I don't know what situation, I don't know what struggle that you're in. But if you say, Brother Robbie, I don't care if you're saved or if you're not saved. This is what I feel in my spirit to do tonight. If you just say, I know that I need deliverance. Older people, don't discredit yourself in this moment. The Holy Ghost is no respecter of prayer. Of course we're here for the younger people. But don't miss your, respond to God somebody. Deliverance is here. Freedom is here. Jesus has already stopped the plague. All you've got to do is receive the power for yourself to be delivered. Hallelujah. On the count of three, if you say, brother... Brother Robbie, I know that I need deliverance about something. I want you to come to this altar right now. One, two, three, move right now. Move right now. Hallelujah. Move right now. Come on, I'll wait on you. I'll give you about 10 seconds to move. I need deliverance. I need deliverance. I need freedom. Come on, nine, eight. I need deliverance in my mind. I need deliverance in my heart. There's one. Come on. This is not a salvation, just a salvation. This is if you're saved, but you know there's something that's still against your heart, against your mind, I want you to come right now. Come on, move right now. Five seconds. Five, four, three. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We got them coming. We got them coming. We'll give you another five, ten seconds. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Come on. I need some sisters to come up here and surround these sisters. Amen. Uh, uh, Chucky, Jake, and, and Kobe, I want you to come and pray with our brother right here. Amen. Come on. Come on. Before we move any further, these these right here are going to be free from this day forward. Come on. Come on. I want them to gather around. I want you to lay hands on them in the name of Jesus. Come on. If you're up here, I want you to lift up your hands. If you're needing deliverance from something, right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Come on. I need some women of God around these young women. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. If you're a prayer warrior, come up here. Surround them in Jesus name hallelujah hallelujah I need some more women around this around this woman of God right here hallelujah God right now right now let chains be broken God we're going to get this right before we get before we go further Lord you've got to deliver us before we deliver somebody else come on if you still need something I want you to come up it's not too late to come up and get your deliverance tonight Come on, deliverance. Come on, ask God, deliver me. Come on, women of God. Come on, men of God, pray. Deliver them, God. Set them free, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Come on, don't miss this moment. Open up your mouth and say, God, deliver me. That lying devil has got to go. That fear has got to go. Come on, let him get deep down on the inside of your heart. Let him get in the inside of your mind. Let him get on the inside of your spirit. Come on, block everything else. Come on, come on, pray. Come on, pray for just another couple minutes right here. Pray until you feel that freedom. By the blood of the Lamb. By the word of our testimony. Come on, I need some more sisters up there here helping, helping, helping her pray in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, come on in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Right now, God, touch your Father. Freedom, freedom, freedom. Come on, who the Son sets free. Who the Son sets free. Holy Ghost, you minister right now. Jesus, you minister right now. God set her hands free. God set her voice free. God set her mind free. Come on, come on, come on. In the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Come on, just accept the victory that Jesus has already won. God, in the name of Jesus. Before I ask to be a deliverer, before I ask to be a plague stopper, God stopped the plague in me. God delivered me. God set me free. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, is there anybody else? Is there anybody else that says I need deliverance for something tonight? Come on, we don't fight. We don't fight flesh and blood. Come on, don't just take another medication for it. Don't just, don't just write it off as a chemical imbalance. Believe God tonight. Believe God tonight. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. As they continue to pray, I need some young people. If you're in this altar and you say, I know God has delivered me and I want to be a plague stopper tonight. I want that anointing. I want that same power, that same burden as Aaron had to stand between the living and the dead. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to throw up your hands. Come on, if you say, I want to be a plague stopper. I want that power. I want that source. And they're going to begin to play something. And I want you to cry out. I want you to let the Holy Ghost fill you. I want, the, I want you to let the Holy Ghost begin to feel. Come on, say, God, I'll be the censor. God, if you'll be the fire, God, I'll be the censor. I'll be the vessel. If you'll be the glory. Come on, lift up those hands. Lift up those hands. As they begin to sing, counselors, men and women of God, lay hands on these young people. Pray that God fills them tonight. Pray that incense rises in this house tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hey everybody, Pastor Ron, I pray that today's message and program has been just a great blessing to you. And I just uh, am so thankful that we had the privilege to come into your home today or wherever you may be watching. I would encourage you to uh, continue to follow us. We're on all of the major social media platforms. Uh, we have podcasts that you can follow us with. I would encourage you to reach out to us and let us know. Our information's on the screen. And uh, if we've been a blessing to you, please contact us. Let us know. And we look forward to sharing the word of the Lord with you again. Uh, next time, God bless you. We'll see you soon.